Hi, I'm James, and today on the desk we have the first of Dell's 2022 uh, new Inspiron Online, which is the new 14 inch AMD Barcelo based uh, 5425 laptop. This was accompanied on its launch day with the 16 inch version, the 5625. However, um, for the time being, I have opted just to buy the 14 inch model. And these are interesting for a couple of reasons, uh, due to Dell adopting the AMD Barcelo APU. The Barcelo is a refresh of AMD's Suzanne-based uh, APUs, which we didn't see in Dell's Inspiron range last year. I believe some of the higher power models may have snuck in to other machines, however. This 2022 model isn't just a CPU upgrade, however, there are some design changes, uh, most significantly the screen, which we will look at later, um, which really set it apart from its predecessor, the 5415. Otherwise, inside the box we have our laptop itself, we have the power supply and cable, we also have the most bare bones of quick start guides, which really just gives you some illustrations on how to connect power, and turn on the laptop, and also how to activate the privacy shutter and your ports and so on on the laptop. We also get warranty information, radio frequency details, and your safety guides, all of which pretty much everyone will ignore. So looking at the laptop itself, and we have the same platinum silver finish as we're used to from the 5415 that was launched last year. And turning it over, we see that again, platinum silver base, but in plastic, uh, the aluminium is limited to the lid and the inside of the palm rest here. Looking around the machine, we have our standard Dell DC jack, HDMI 1.4 port, so only really good for 30 frames per second 4K output or 1080p 60 hertz, a USB-A uh, 5 gigabit per second port, a USB-C, uh, so USB 3.2 Gen 2, uh, so 10 gigabits per second port, which also supports DisplayPort and USB power delivery, so this can be used to charge the laptop and also to, with the appropriate adapter, output 4K 60Hz uh, that way. On the other side we have our headphone jack, a full-size SD slot, which is something I like to see being that I use cameras with full-size SD cards, and a second USB 3.2 Gen 1 5 gigabit per second port here. Now one thing which is very noticeable uh, compared to the previous year's laptops is before we had like this semicircle at the back of the screen and this is now gone. Instead we have this sort of textured, almost rubberized foot here. So this again lifts the laptop as you open it but gives a slightly different effect so you get, don't get that visual continuation around here. Uh, whereas before, I'll try and include a clip of a previous generation machine opening up. Um, now, I'm not sure if I like this compared to its sort of predecessors. Um, I thought that actually looked a bit neater. I also wondered if maybe this was sacrificial and could easily be replaced, but without taking apart the screen assembly, it doesn't appear like it's something that you can easily replace if it got damaged. So, a bit of a strange decision there. I wouldn't say necessarily worse but perhaps not quite as attractive looking. Now the most obvious change on these two new 2022 models is that of the 1610 screen. And just to illustrate the difference, unfortunately I don't have a 5415, but I do have its two-in-one equivalent, which is almost the same size, the 7415. And what we can see here is lining this up in the back corner. The laptop is now a little slimmer, but a fair chunk taller. And what this means is the screen being, rather than a 16-9 traditional uh, aspect ratio, has sort of been brought in and up to make it a 16-10 aspect ratio panel. This gives you a little more vertical screen space when you're working, but does mean that you will get black borders for content consumption when you're watching videos because a 16-9 video won't fill the full screen. 
For me, um, when I'm writing or do, even doing emails or browsing web pages, I tend to prefer the 16-10 aspect ratio. It gives you a little more vertical screen, screen space to work with and that is something I've really missed with the move to 16-9 panels. However, it does mean when you are viewing 16.9 video content, you effectively are ending up with a smaller screen because you're in software almost chopping off the top and bottom to make something that's going to be closer to a 13.3 inch screen. So you do lose a little bit there. Looking at the palm rest portion of the machine, and we have for Dell a fairly typical keyboard setup. I tend to quite like their UK English layout keyboards, and this is much the same as what I am used to. We do have a backlight, which has two levels of adjustment, as well as off, so full bright, dimmed, and off. And we have our standard array, fairly sparse selection of function keys with the option to function lock to swap from doing function keys or F keys. Mirroring the change in aspect ratio of the screen, we also have the touchpad has grown a centimeter taller compared to the 5415. Uh, so this again, you gain the height in the touchpad. Otherwise, touchpad, again, much as you would expect. Um, good feel and support for the standard Windows precision gestures and so on, all supported natively through the settings panel. Up in the top corner, the power button, as is normal on Dell models now, also doubles up as the fingerprint sensor, as indicated by this little sticker here. This has been trained and operates as it does on the wide range of Dells which use this particular sensor. I found it pretty quick and accurate in operation. Um, I only trained it very quickly but haven't had any real issues with it so far and having used a number of different machines with these expect it should be a pretty good performer. It is worth noting that the cooling on the laptop vents out here on uh, each side there are some vents I believe on one side these are moulded in and on the other side they are functional and these do vent towards the base of the screen here. Speaking of that screen it is 14 inches diagonal and we have nice slim bezels all around it. As mentioned before this is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1200 as we can see here. What this means is that compared to your typical 16.9 screen, the screen is a little taller giving you more vertical working space. Um, as I've mentioned before, worse for content consumption if you're watching 16.9 video, but better for a lot of things like the photo editing I do, uh, or even just web browsing getting more vertical height on the screen. It has 250 nits of brightness and is a WVA type panel. Um, this is pretty typical of Dell's of this class of machine and I don't really have an issue with this. I think it gives pretty good viewing angles overall. Um, it could be brighter but I tend to think these are a fairly good display. The webcam at the top here has a little shutter which can be slid across to physically block the webcam and is flanked either side by dual array stereo microphones. What is interesting with this camera, and hello, is that unlike many other laptops, this is actually a full 1080p uh, camera. So we can capture 30 frames per second video all the way up to 1080p, along with still images at this resolution. That's really nice, it's predecessor, and in fact, pretty much every other laptop I have used has had a 30 frames per second 720p camera, so that step up is nice to see. Looking at some specifics of the machine, and obviously it ships with Windows 11 installed. This is Windows 11 Home and the 21H2 build you would expect to find. We also confirm here that we have our AMD Ryzen 5 5625U processor and 8GB of RAM installed. Looking in CPU Z, and we'll see this is still detected as a Cezanne processor. Um, there really is a very little difference between the Cezanne, uh, such as the 5600U, and the Barcelo 
5625U that we have here. Really, the only differences are that we have a, I believe it is 100 megahertz increase in the core processor clock speed for sort of maximum boost frequency, but we also have a 200 megahertz drop in the GPU frequency. So obviously AMD have decided to that the better balance of performance is to give a bit more performance to the processor and that actually maybe the graphics side of it couldn't really make use of that extra speed and was uh, you know still limited elsewhere. CPU Z even thinks that the revision here matches up to a Cezanne, so it's possible that there really aren't any silicon changes here and it is just a rebalancing and they've just given the refresh the name Barcelo instead. The main board tab confirms that our BIOS is up to date for December 21st, 2021. I will be checking for my full review of this machine, which will be coming in the next week or so. If there are any BIOS improve, if there are any, but I will be checking for my full review if there are any BIOS updates available, and of course applying those. But this is really just my first impressions of the machine. Memory is a single DDR4 3200 module, um, so obviously single channel memory. This is upgradable but as standard only comes with the one memory module installed, as was the case with uh, the 5415 predecessor and the 5410 Intel-based machines in this class. Dell normally only dual populate it if you're going for 16 gigs of RAM or higher, I believe. The graphics here is still the AMD Vega-based 7-compute unit graphics core, so Vega 7, as many would call it. Uh, this is not the RN... This is not the RDNA 2 based graphics found in the Rembrandt chips, which were announced at the same time as these Barcelo refreshes, but not yet available as far as I'm aware in any laptops, at least available here in the UK. Um, those 6000 series chips will be much more exciting in terms of having that refresh graphics, but it is nice to at least see Dell offering a Zen 3 CPU core in these mainstream 15 watt based laptops. Looking elsewhere and Crystal Disk Info confirms we have a 256 gigabyte NVMe type SSD which is a PCI Express 3.0 times 4 device. And having tested it with Crystal Disk Mark we see that we get about 1.8 gigabytes per second read and 1.3 gigabytes per second write. So not the fastest SSDs out there, but again, fairly typical of what you'd expect from an OEM drive in this kind of capacity in this class of laptop. So this has been my first impressions review of the Dell Inspiron 14. 5425. Obviously I will be doing a fuller review of this in due course uh, but I was really excited because I ordered this the moment I saw it on the Dell website on the 1st of February. It came in today and I think I am probably the first or at least one of the first to be looking at this. I haven't found any other videos or reviews online yet. So really exciting to get this in and to be able to answer questions and give you my thoughts on the machine so far. That said, if you do have any questions or if you have one of these machines on order, let me know in the comments. I will do my best to answer that in replies and also in the next video as I post it. I will also be looking at doing a upgrade guide, uh, replacing the DIMM modules and SSD in this to bring it up to a 16 gigabyte dual channel configuration and fitting a larger SSD because Dell actually didn't sell the configuration I wanted as well as testing this against the 5550U in its predecessor. So thank you again for watching. Do hit like if you found it helpful, comment if you want to know anything more on it, and subscribe if you'd like to see those videos as we post them.